Ladies and Germans, how are you all doing? This is... I'm Ring Ru, hello, hello, hello. And folks, the ongoing Red Storm 44 League continues. Here on Ocean North, Rang, who's in this first of our two replays this week? Oh, on the left-hand side in the blue, we have ourselves uh, Robert playing the 70th Sturm Division. And on the right-hand side in the red, we have ourselves a Gearhead 117 playing as the third VDV. You know, looking at these decks overall, I mean, we talked a little bit about this before we went live here. Some of the Sturm of Vanilla hasn't really got the same amount of attention that it might have gotten when it initially was in to the game. Why see it here? I mean, third VDV, we've, or we've definitely talked about the issues that it has. Does the 70 Sturm match up favorably, or is it just kind of like luck of the draw here? 70 Sturm in the mod is definitely a little bit more interesting. You have Tigers for run to the start. It actually has a lot of heavy firepower of the Tigers, the Nash Horns. It's a lot more expensive stuff. The infantry, of course, is very good, but definitely a little bit more pricey. It'd be interesting to see. You don't have as much tree availability in total compared to third VDV, but they should do decently. Third VDV also has, you know, issues which will help out quite a bit of dealing with heavy anti-tank, so this is two, like, elite infantry formations going at it with heavy fire support, so it should be a pretty interesting match. Well, the thing I think I'm kind of quite fascinated by is that the third VDV over here has really not that many tanks. No. But, I mean... You could argue 70 Sturm doesn't have a whole lot either. It's got a lot more assault guns. But the fact remains, we have an armored vehicle, I would say, advantage over on the German side, at least on the yes. face of Yeah, definitely, definitely. The T-34s are definitely nice to throw into cheap CQC fights compared to Stugs. And you do have the SUs and the ISUs to help even out the odds. But just looking at its opening deployment, nothing really too crazy from both sides. It's standard uh, spread all across the map and uh, her robot getting some 20 millimeter flat guns right into the fray versus some maxims well and not just the maxims also the 50 mil mortars though yeah. too so 50 mil mortars gonna go and start engaging the infantry to the south we have the bf 109 going up to desante uh, superior over here in the middle not super shocking i think i'm more surprised to see this early the pe3 but oof oof there we Double. go, yeah. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit of air power early on here from both sides. And once again, these are the support versions of the Flag 38, which come in the support tab, meaning that they can't shoot to aircraft. As some anti-aircraft units are on the support tab as direct fire support. And yeah, that's the kind of the fascinating thing here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, the one to the south is actually going to be pretty much out of his AP ammo pretty damn quickly here. But he damaged his optics, and the tracks are broken, so, I mean, technically he did his job. Yeah, it's going to keep that tank pinned down for now, as we have a whole heap of scary pioneers moving through. And it's also really scary when your reconnaissance troops also have flamethrowers, so... I don't think our T-34 is going to live for much longer, as you're like, Gearhead is going to be doing some counter-battering of the 50mm mortar. Well, right now the 50mm mortar just wants to go and bracket everything, so he's still trying to find his range. He's fired off like 7 rounds and all of them have done zero morale damage, so it's quite That's impressive. Pretty pathetic, those things are usually dead on accurate. We got some T-26s from the German side trying to move through down south, but gonna be running some PTRDs. Yeah, and, and, and this is, I think, really why we don't see the T-26s being used even by the, the Russians here either. Yeah, not exactly a great tank by 1944 standards, especially if you only reconnaissance support. He's just asking to get sniped here by an anti-tank rifle. Oh, absolutely. I do want to make a quick call-out. We did have an SU-85 over here in the center, and Stug already asserting its early dominance there. Kind of hard to forget that the SU-85 really only has 75 millimeters of armor. It, it seems so much more terrifying in the game, I mean, when it kind of engages the P4s, but against a stroke, it's surprisingly meager kind of competition. Yeah, it's a pretty even fight between that and the Stug, really. Like, the SU-85, I mean, it is essentially just the Russian version of a Stug, but without the, uh, machine gun, sexy of course. Antenna. And the And the sexy antenna and bazooka oh, skirt. Yeah. That's really what makes the Stug the Stug. Down south, yo, Gearhead is making actually great progress, moving through the forest and getting into the opposing farmstead here with his Desat Nidki, uh, Radevkas, and Aftos as well, so 
Going to be forcing some of these T26s to fall back and try and deal with this threat. I don't know that that's really a fair way to kind of say that they're dealing with that threat. Cause I feel like the, 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 these T60s over here are just awful. Yeah, they're not great. At the same time, you know, get O'Hare oh, Robert moving pretty effectively down south with his Pioneer troops. He's not going to continue to push right now, I believe, just because he doesn't have any fire support for an open ground engagement, but he could potentially, you know, trade his southern hill for his farmstead position, which I feel like is what's going to happen. Well, and he's also going to be bringing in the BF-109, so he's going to go and rocket that entire little complex there. Exactly what he needs to be doing, honestly. Yeah. Yep. Whoa! So <laughs> it down. I always forget how devastating that, that ammunition is. Yeah. In and this kind of material. Yes, sir. Blowing up both buildings completely, too, which is... Yep, I mean, her robot's going to be able to retake that point pretty easy-peasy-like. That's true. All it cost him was to uh, these whacked-out, uh, you know, P740s. Yep. Um, not to be outdone, though, we have a PE3 going the other direction, looking to take out this Pack 40, and really, that's what you got to be doing over here is the third VDD, is that you have to be taking the Pack 40s, you got to be taking out those Martyrs. If you can get in knife fighting close, you still have a lot of heavy vehicles later on, the ISU 152 that you mentioned before, for example. Yeah, and then you can use that, and goddamn that rocket strike hit the mark. But yeah, knocking out that heavy anti tank armor threat is going to be a priority, and honestly, not too bad. I mean, the one problem with 70 of Sam is, of course, like Nash Horns, and especially Nash Horns, I mean, they're bloody fantastic. But on a map like this, really hard to use because they can get exposed and killed rather easily as you can't really take advantage of that two kilometer range. True. No True, armor. Maybe, maybe you can kind of do a little bit of it in the center, but it's not really that full two kilometers, is it? It's like 1600, which is a. Yeah, it's a lot of line of sight blockers, too. It, it does. It's definitely the better place, just on the central hill, to deny movement, but it still can be quite difficult. It definitely does seem to be that way. We might have a small armor engagement down to the south, and I emphasize small, because we're going to have basically T-34s engaging the Martyr, which is the only true fighting vehicle left on the, on the particular flank. Yeah, that's such a long name. <laughs> yeah, this isn't it. Like a sentence, Ooh. not... Oh, <laughs> Yep, and that's the problem with Nash Orange, right? Yeah. And that's that's an expensive loss. Like, it's one of those things that I, I, I know makes perfect sense the cost that they've got there, but man alive, whenever I see a Nash Orange go down quite that simply, I always think to myself, eh, they're overpriced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, 105 points is definitely not a drop in the bucket to lose one of those things. But of course, in the right situation, they can be quite deadly, and I think all oh, the PTRD squad down south is just going to knock out its martyr, probably. Oh, absolutely. There we go. Engine destroyed. He is a sitting duck. And this is really some, you know, good play of anti-tank rifles. Like, anti-tank rifle squads for the Russians and Hungarians as well are just bloody deadly. As you can see, mm -hmm. even against more heavily armored tanks, you may not kill them, but you can just score so many critical hits to make them combat ineffective. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. I like seeing uh, these mortars, I mean, the 50 mil mortars, the only one that's been brought in for right now. But regardless, I like seeing that we have this here. Could we be seeing potential... Hmm. So I'm looking at the top real quick, a BF-109 kind of coming back in, another one of these rocket planes. If he gets the rockets on and takes out the T-34, potentially? Okay, nope. I was waiting to see if we're going to see some sort of maybe push because of that. Yeah, not North... sure I really like their chances. Yes, sir? The North has been really quiet. Like, it's all just been very concentrated down south. I expect to see, you know, a lot of bit of skirmishing up north from both players. Maybe try to relieve some pressure on this southern hill, but apparently not. And we still have this, you know, huge heap of uh, pioneer squads in the forest here. It's going to be quite a pain in the ass to dig out. Absolutely. Absolutely. T-3476, Maxim over here, you know, they should be able to take out the Flak 38. I mean, this is not something that should be super concerned with. Um, it's more just that constant small kind of stunning, that constant small kind of criticals that we should be thinking about here. Yeah. There's a Niki guard squad trying to come around as we have a pincer movement here, but I still don't really relish their chances. No, no, the doesn't. Yeah, the guard, the guard auto is definitely have the better chance, but those flame pioneer squads are nasty because. They hit you up with the satchel charge, because they also have a hidden satchel charge, and then the flamethrower 1-2 combo. And in a forest fight, those weapons are just... 
You just die, <laughs> really, as you oh, clearly see. Yeah, just burned and blown up, not all ready to go. I do think I do like this kind of let's call it more considered fallback. There, he doesn't he doesn't benefit from trying to engage on the Russian side of the lines. He doesn't have that kind of big kind of push that he can do. Although in prepared positions, we are seeing them be able to maybe even fight these Ultima Cheekies to a standstill, which is just shocking to see. Yeah, Ultima Cheekies and this sort of engagement don't really have the upper hand in dense forest fights against Flame Forest actual challenge combo. In a light forest, they do actually perform a bit better because they have a slight range advantage over the Flame Forest and Satchels. But really, to deal with that nasty, uh, like, flame blob, and I've dealt with it as playing with Red Storm, it's really just try to mortar the hell out of the forest. But the funny thing is, is that the 50mm mortar, I'm going to show up over here, at least on my screen, the suppression and the blast is not as big as it might have been otherwise. You can see right now, it kept dropping rounds down and barely did any real suppression damage. Yeah, I think at close range it's definitely more accurate, but True. it's much more of a uh, pinpoint weapon. Like, you need to have the infantry scroll spotted, which can be a difficulty in the forest. Highly recommend recon planes for dealing with that issue. But True. Bombs, anything indirectly which can, you know, blow up the trees from afar is really going to be his best bet because this is a roadblock for him in regards to just trying to take his southern hill. And her robber's exploiting this. He's got that roadblock set up and he's moving through, you know, the southern northern forest here and making lovely progress. He certainly does seem to be doing that, doesn't he? Yeah, and he has a whole lot of armor here too. He's got two stugs, a third run, fourth run being brought in, the Marder 2 leader. He also has an Abra over on the hill as well as two flak ACH already set up, so a pretty decent anti-aircraft now. Her robots mm. definitely take advantage of that, you know, sturm assault that you want to be doing in 78th. Well, the, the naval's going to be actually attacking that uh, M42 over here, so 45mm in the center part of that map. Makes a good amount of sense. I, I always think that the M42 definitely punches above its weight, and especially when you have those lighter assault vehicles like the Stug. You don't want to be putting those and, and trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Russian anti-tank guns. It's not going to come out happy for you. Yeah, it was, it was M42s. May look pretty... Not, not Yeah, pretty weak, especially if they're lower AP ammunition count, but they can prove to be such a pain. I also very much happy that uh, Crisp has priced him at 42 points. <laughs> that was just perfect. Uh, never never balance out, Crisp. Keep it the same. <laughs> The gold standard of yeah. the Red Storm 44. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the, the Panther 3 should be three points as well, just saying. Okay, that's, that's about yeah. what they're worth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know what? I, I I have to agree with you. I think the Stoke, the Force Multiplier here is much better if you can get two or three of them not having to worry about men moving around their flanks. Just going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an SU-85, two or three to one? Yes, let's do it. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, this is going to be a really nasty force that Gearhead is going to deal with, with this all the armor here. I mean, the Descent Iki can't really do too much, especially with the infantry. A lot of nasty infantry, the Flamethrower Pioneers, lead in the ray, so... I mean, we're all just entering into B phase right now. It's actually pretty even even, and time is on Gearhead's side. It's now when he starts to get the point advantage. But map control is starting to look a little bit nasty of her robot can make his southern push happen. You know, I, I forgot that those Razvedkas had the SVT 40s that, that legitimately are. They, they feel like they're sniper rifles that almost fire like armor piercing ammunition. I don't know, just watching some of this Baglita <laughs> Strutzen squad come in, and there's little puffs of fire behind it. I'm thinking to myself, those incendiary guns? What the deuce are those? It just, it's. It's always a, a bit of a shock there. Checking it, up on the north, yes sir. Mm -hmm. Just like in a sniper elite where you blow up tanks with uh like shooting the you know, the oil barrels. Oh or the, absolutely the, the fuel tanks, there you go. Which is completely silly, but it's sniper elite, so you just gotta go along with it. Well that's that's how you know that's when you, you shoot uh, Hitler in the testicles as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I like oh, how I, every I... game has that mission. It's just the gimmick DLC. It's like, oh, you can shoot Hitler. Yeah, but you know, I, it, Sniper League was one of, those, one of those games that was kind of funny to me. We have this guy who moves like a cat when he walks, but when he runs, he sounds like a three-ton elephant. <laughs> Never yeah. understood that. Never understood that. Yeah. Um, Sturmaviki is 37 mils. I mean, we're seeing continual just uh, 
building of material. We are seeing a bit of a tentative push across here the center. Veteran Schutz moving on in with the LMGs. The superiors, though, I think be more than a match with them if the Schutzen close to that minimum range. You cannot do that against superiors. Really, engineer squads have any stripe. So Yeah. But he's going to be moving in close with guard units, and yeah, just not going to perform well, as we're going to clearly see. He's really misallocating resources using guards in these fights. He needs... He needs to have those and superiors in these southern forests to really get the advantage, so to speak. Well, that's the weird thing. I feel like it's... I'm not going to say it's a bit of a mixed bag, but it is a bit of a mixed bag. We see... Ooh, 76 mil barrage is going to be dropped in the south. But we're going to be seeing this consistent thing where we have this mismanagement of infantry. And I think the Germans have been doing a much better job of allocating or reallocating... The infantry assets as necessary. Yeah, so I definitely agree. What is saving gearhead right now is all the fire support with the Maxim gun, the 45mm and that 37mm, uh, keeping the Germans head pinned down in that forest. You're also seeing her Robert trying to push for the southern town, moving from veteran shootings over rather open territory here. The Suzuki is providing a bit of uh, fire support. It'll be interesting to see if her Robert can actually get a foothold into that town. That is a lucrative spot. I mean, that's not one, not two, but three flags he can flip over to his side. If. If, yeah. If. If, just and like the Spartans. Mil, 76 mil barrage in the meantime comes on down, and we have some devastating material. Yeah, goddamn. That's like a hundred round barrage here, gonna be pinning down the Germans for the time being. But her Robert still has those Stugs, and really down south, Gearhead doesn't have anything to deal with him. Seeing a neighbor off a strike, trying to hit the 37 mil, not really doing too much. A second run onto the town here, and that might be enough to pin down the Superiors and allow the Shuchan to come in and clear up the town. And there's a Tiger as well. Do you think that's going to be enough to do it? I think so. I think he's pinned down enough in the town to use his two shoots from scrolls to finish up the job and he has the tiger and the stug on the hill providing fire support. You are seeing an ISU being brought in, so I mean the tiger does have the high ground, so I'm gonna have to give it to him. Yeah, but you know what? Size matters in these fights. Size definitely matters in these fights. In the ISU you cannot discount the fact that that is a scary, scary gun. Yeah. Your slow firing gun, so if he misses he's puckered. Yes. Yes, definitely is the case. Uh, we are going to have BF-109 making a gun run over here in the south. I would, wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing... Yep, there we go. And this is going to be a flag that's Mwah. definitely going to turn to the Germans, I'm sure. Beautiful airstrike, right, yeah. Like, those, those 109s with the heavy rockets have been lovely for her role, but now it's just completely clear in the southern flank here, allowing her Robert to move up his tanks. If we can get Stug onto the edge of that hill... Uh, it's pretty much the southern flank done for. Oh, the oh, tiger absolutely. getting... Cl he's a bit close to some of Iki's down south, but... Gonna be able to survive. At least for now, yes. There's yeah. an SU-85 and T-34-76 looking to stem the breakout. I don't know that I like their chances, but I'm, I was gonna say, they are gonna take out the mortar <laughs> for sure, without a doubt. But I don't like I don't like the chances otherwise. Tiger in the center goes down, I think, courtesy of the ISC 122. But yeah. Yep, there's the corpse just to the east of the Stug. That's my understanding at the beginning of the match. Yep. ISU getting a good kill, but now if his driver killed, he's more of a uh, oh, anti-tank gun position in case an armor rather than an assault gun. Yep. It's just a gun. The assault's been removed. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, Stug in the meantime, they are going to go and deploy and try to take out this material down to the south. This might be the end of the German breakout here. Tiger is going to attempt to go and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everything else. Tracks are broken. Yikes. I think oh! That was the ISU firing down. No, that wasn't the ISU. What the heck was that? That wasn't the was 37 that, mil, was it? Was that the 37 mil? Was he so in shide armor? Wait, I'm trying to... I think he... I think... No, the Tiger is no, no, so in rear. Oh my Tiger, gosh, like, what are you doing? Front towards the enemy, come on. 
That is a pathetic way to lose a tiger, holy moly. That is, that is certainly one of those this-end-up kind of ideas here. Yeah, but the thing is, Sir Robert, even though he took some heavy uh, tank losses, it's a 16-8. So he's doing pretty good in terms of flags, and that's really all that matters. He's almost cleared out the town down south. I feel like Gearhead really needs to try and relieve some pressure by attacking up north, and he's doing it a little bit, got some avatars sneaking through the forest, and some veteran descent need keys to try and clear through. But once again, they're not exactly the best CQC fighters, and it's Flame Pioneers. Certainly does seem to be the case. We are going to see a push to the south. Five Squad trying to go and support there. To the northern side, like you said, we have... I don't know if this is Herr Robert trying to press advantage someplace else, or if this was just a, a happenstance. Like, I, the way that troops are deployed doesn't tell me that this wasn't a concerted push. Are the Stugs up north? Well, it would be the Schutzen and the Flam Pioneers and the, you know, the SDKFZs. Like, it, it doesn't tell me this was a push. This was lines that got pierced and are now paying the price. Yeah. I'm really curious here why you brought three Stugs up north as... I, I understand he's realizing, you know, shit's going down up and off, but that's, that's a lot of tanks, right? I feel like he needs more infantry and, like, anti-tank gun placements rather than assault guns. Unless he's gearing up to do... I actually think he's gearing up to do an assault, I take it back, because he's got the off-map artillery being brought in, so he'll probably just drop it for the death set need key comrade he is, blow them to smithereens, and then assault them with the assault guns. You are a genius. Look at this. Thank you, Khan. Sometimes I, you know, my I, brilliance scares me. It certainly scares me. <laughs> <laughs> IL-2 in the center, by the way. We're going to see HE clusters. Goodbye, Airsatch Troopin. We hardly liked you anyway. Ugh. As you might expect, he goes down, not with a bang, but with a whimper. Yeah. I am fascinated by this Northern Barrage, though. Same. I mean... Feels like he needs more recon as the slugs by themselves, so he's just gonna get over overextend and then get killed. But that artillery strike when it comes down in a minute because this is Red Storm, artillery takes forever and a half to drop into position will be deadly because there was 210 mil. Yo, yeah, one of the slugs already dies to the T-34 because he didn't see it. Which I was gonna say was weird, but then I realized that. His infantry is not successfully placed to get eyes on. Yeah, they're definitely more in a defensive posture right now. I mean, how Robert's been doing very good of his infantry play, but he's been losing quite a lot of tanks to a silly means. I guess here's the question. The legs looking long term. Somebody is strong. If they lose vehicles at this particular kind of rate, I'm not going to say, oh, can they go and hold the line? But... What do the anti-tank assets look like? I think he's going to be fine, because he has a crap ton of Tigers in the sea phase. And he has a lot of Nash Horns as well. So he can afford availability rise to lose Tigers, but point rise, once we get to sea phase, his income plummets. Which is Ooh, going to be the difficulty. Unfortunately for him, the artillery strike is going to come just as all of the Russians move out. Ironically, this might be one of the few times that being a commander is not the right place to be. It's behind the front lines. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, paying the price for letting his troops take a assault here. But this will be an interesting person. Both both sides are gearing for an attack and are forcing to attack each other head on now. It's kind of like the 40k strategy, you know? Or like Star Wars equals kind of stuff. Where it's like, ah, oh, yes, guys, we do a frontal charge. They'll never expect that. <laughs> like all the battles over the Isonzo River in the First World War. Oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. Yes, Luigi Cardona. Oh my gosh. What were you thinking? The the eleventh time it'll work. I swear. Yeah. So what he's talking about, folks, is a crazy, crazy thing. Actually, if you want to listen to a great podcast that talks about this, go to the Lions Led by Donkeys. They do a fantastic episode about Luigi de Cardona and the the the, the twelve battles. Yeah, the twelve battles. Yeah, troll battles. Oh my gosh! If at first you don't <laughs> succeed, try and try and try and try and just keep trying again. <laughs> it's a small corollary to that. If at first you don't succeed, flog the men who get back. <laughs> Oh my gosh, a shrew lines up my donkeys in that case. I can't even make 
Italian uh, jokes. Those guys are just poor, poor guys. Yeah, it really um, sucked. The northern flank has folded. Yeah, it's weird. Like I thought the officers would would keep the front lines a little bit more contained here, but no, the Camarati is not able to put up with this kind of firepower of that magnitude. Yeah, I think the artillery, even though it dropped a little bit far, I mean, it's still 210 millimeters. You know, and to be entirely accurate to stress out guys, and the Desekniki have definitely taken pretty heavy casualties. This is about getting those stugs into a good position. I mean, once again, they don't really have much reconnaissance, and another one's going to go down, yeah. So, not perfect. But hey, there's a J188, which is going to just carpet bomb the everlasting crap out of that hill. Holy crap. Yeah, and, you know, that's kind of what you need to be doing. Yeah. But Oh, my gosh. I like how... The <laughs> you managed to capture the... The flag, where the veteran Shuchinjav is after, was behind enemy lines. That is, oh, the front lines in Red Storm just get really crazy sometimes, as we can see. Yeah, and, and you know, I think that's what I appreciate about that though is that in this particular mod, the free flowing lines make sense. Yes, it's. I, I people do complain that it does get a little bit aggressive and does look a little bit silly, but it definitely rewards you in actually setting up defenses along the front line and not having. I mean, you're gonna have weak points, but trying to clog in those weak points, but also allows you to effectively exploit enemy weak points as well. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is that the mod definitely encourages you doing aggressive plays over less contested areas rather than just hitting head on. In a uh, stalemate tunnel fight. Absolutely, absolutely. And and, and <laughs> let's be fair. This is at least it's not the whole fifty-one forty-nine nonsense we used to see back in vanilla SD forty-four. So yeah. Yeah, this northern pusher is. I mean, I'm surprised at how Robert's doing so well up north. And we are seeing reinforcements here from Gearhead. But this is going to be great for him because he's already doing good down south. So if he's doing good up north, that's gonna. Be even better. Yo, absolutely looking down south, the situation is starting to look a little bit dire for, for Mr. Robert. He's lost control over that southern hill. Uh, the town has pretty much been recaptured here from Gearhead. Yeah, I think Gearhead is actually gearing up for a uh, southern assault. Absolutely. Absolutely. And looking at the, the forces that are there to kind of go and maybe stop him... I, I don't know that's going to be the case. Sturmschützen, good start, but that's not going to be enough to hold back, you know, the T-34. That's not going to be enough to hold back, really, any kind of committed artillery fire, which I know we're not seeing a ton of at the moment, but there's always that possibility. Yeah. That's a whole heap of Russians down south. And looking at the quality of the southern... I mean, yeah, we have some other sad strooping, but... And you should have quite a few flame pioneers, actually. So yeah, how Robert still has quality infantry, I was going to make your argument, but, um... We're going to see how this will go. I mean, once again, he's moving, uh... Like, des like regular rifle teams, like DP squads, into the forest, which is... Not a good allocation of infantry after Gearhead. It really needs to be exclusively thrown in Avtos and Superiors and yeah. I'd like to think that what he was doing, and I thought he was hoping, I was hoping he was going to do this until the superiors kind of made this weird, you know, flanking maneuver here. What I would like to have seen, as I would have liked to have seen using the DPs as being kind of fixing the enemy positions, and at that point, then going, turning around and, I don't want to say modifying things, but allowing them to kind of clean up what remains, you know? Yeah. Bologna is going to be leading the charge here. Fighting some rather nice infantry fire support. It's just become a messy CQC fight as Superiors and Sturmschutzens and Pioneers all just circle around each other. Well, and I, I don't know if you guys have an engineering fight, but those guys, they are bloodthirsty. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about, like, you know, guys here in this particular material. I'm talking about real life engineers. That, man, those guys are brutal. Um, meantime, though, we had JUE 188 was dropped. No, he didn't even drop his rounds, did he? Nope. No, he did not. Jeez. Mezzer Smith's coming in for more strikes. Going I after you, the ISU. Mezzer Smith's have been the saving grace, I think. Yeah, definitely been quite helpful in just knocking out those key units. 
Yo, I do like how Gearhead is actually gearing up. I keep saying gearing up. I'm not actually doing that for the intentional pun. But he, he is. is. <laughs> God damn it, Khan. <laughs> but uh, he is making like con a conceited effort through the central position now, which is a you know good reef point which he can exploit. I mean, he's very cl you know almost got out one flag by the farmstead, and I, I think he is definitely overextended with that ISU. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you saw, just getting hit by two Messerschmitts twice. Not a good day to spend runs afternoon, and he does go down due to just the uh, napalm after effects builds rockets. Yeah, I, I think it goes a little bit deeper than that, to a certain extent. The I flames definitely did inside the tank. Oh, no, no, I meant more of the, about the fact that he almost has to be aggressive here. Like, yes, the ISU-122 is definitely overextended. I think he was hoping to get... And use that force there, at least that's like, like a firing position. Of course, if he rotates north or south, he covers an extensive amount of his, his, you know, backing. And as you can see right now, he's moving the Maxim, he's moving into that VP squad. This MG42 is going to cut into pieces in about a second and a half. But, if he can get any kind of infantry in there, that is nigh impregnable without any kind of artillery to kind of shift him out. Yeah, it'd be a really good position for him to hold on to once you get into that little forest where the MG42s are, but... I feel like this is a mistake holding fire. He really wants to be shooting now before they get closer. But even then, I mean, defensive position, MG42, nasty stuff. Well, ISU goes down to a naval buffer strike, which is always delicious there. And the JU-188, oof, that is a bad death. Oh, wow. It's a very bad death. It's 175 points down the drain. Didn't get a whole lot done with it. Holy honestly. crap, those things are expensive. Well, it might have been the 135 point run, but even then, that is expensive. You're right. It might have been the. It might have been the I think the heavier bomb load is the 175. Yeah. Either way, that's still a big plane, now longer flying. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's happened to I... lots of planes in World War II. They were big, and then they stopped flying for some reason. Maybe the flag might have something to do with it. I'm going to have to do some further investigation. I, I love the old story that there that some guy was like, we need to figure out where to put more armor on planes. And they're like, well, guys make it back with holes in these spots, so therefore we must armor that. And the guy eventually was like, wait a second. <laughs> these are the places they can continue to fly. Genius! <laughs> make that's them a, at a bird, Colonel. Yeah. That's such, that's such a, like, a cool story, because it's just a very interesting way of thinking around a problem. Well, I'm just making another problem completely in my mind, but you know, yeesh. Yeah. yeah, down south here, we've got some T-34s in the hills, and Gearhead actually flipping it to a 15-9 now, just due to his and aggression, making some fantastic plays here. I mean, his T-34s close range, there's not a whole lot of stugs, and really, one of the problems I think, which is going to run into for her Robert now, is that he's probably out a lot of his martyrs and stugs, so his only real armor left is Nashorns and Tigers, they're great. But at this point in sea phase, they're bloody expensive. So it's going to be very hard for him to bring these, you know, uh, units onto the field. While Gearhead still has some T-34s left over. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, and that's kind of the concern, isn't it? Is that it's very, very true that we have some excellent kind of long-range fire. See, for example, the Panzer is going to be sh shooting again on this ISU-122. We have the neighborhood first going like crazy. In fact... A lot of these munition trucks are pretty much Winchester and ammunitions, but his infantry is not able to hold the line. His tanks are getting outmatched two and three and four to one. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, and also the income curve. I mean, it's not too bad. It's only a 30th point difference or so, but still, it's not a good position to be in. Your horror Robert still has a lot of... He still has a good point advantage over Gearhead, so he does have time to try and recuperate. He still has very excellent infantry, of course, but I feel like his armor, like, armor disadvantage is going to be a pain in the bum, because those T-34s are really designed to be very deadly on this map. That's true, but not when he loses two of them to a single Grenadier squad, like we just saw oh. down south. Oh, yeah, it is, uh... A bit sad, yeah, for those T-34s, but let's try you bring a recon. Well, into the north, but he took it away from the north with the more southern aggression, but the northern push. Five squads. Five squads. Seem to be, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's going to do a whole lot. I think the idea is nice. 
Is Snow Orphan I, Puss? I, I'm sorry? I feel, I feel like Snow Orphan Puss is going to go pretty well. Because, once again, Gearhead doesn't have... I mean, he does have one Avatar Squad in there, but... As you see, the veteran Death Hands are just going to really take some heavy fire from the Flamethrower Pioneers. Actually, no, they're holding pretty well. Never mind. I think part of that's because of the green cover as opposed to anything else. And, you know, even if there's going to be a secret uh, handshake explosive that gets oh. thrown out there, you still get awful close for that. I also forget, um, the Destiny EQ troops also have Ambush Specialist and as well as yep. a Veteran trait, as well as the God Destiny EQ trait. So even though they don't have the best loadout for CQC, just all that extra bonuses definitely help out a bunch, especially Ambush Specialist. That is. I think one of the best traits to have in a forest fight. You're down oh, south, uh, gear, Gearhead is spearheading his way through, uh, almost taking that f uh, farm complex once again of his T-34s, flanking around the hill. I feel like this southern side is just begging to collapse. I mean, it's true, but at the same time, we got two martyrs, we got another pack 40 being brought on in, we have a tiger being brought on in. I think this is going to be something where the artillery is going to get turned upon this particular direction. I think, the, unfortunately, the artillery is actually being shelling the wrong area completely, but that's that's a different concern. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, the T-34s are definitely not going to survive the night, I believe, but I feel like Gearhead will be able to at least get his infantry into an advantageous defensive position to deter any movement from the armor from her Robert's side. On a counter-battery, he's, a uh, anti-aircraft guns, and it just hasn't been working all that well. The converse has not been true. Uh, veteran Desan in the meantime, moving on forwards, the DPs and fast patrons. I guess Storm Shoots, this really should be ending in one way and one way alone. Yeah. We have 13 assault rifles, you should win most fights. The, the DPs are giving a surprisingly good accounting of themselves. Yeah. Huh. Still wants one more squad in here in the same in the meantime, most of the storm shoots in are they yep, they might even pick up both these T-34s. This isn't gonna be pretty, or easy for that matter, but they might be a pretty you know, big enough kills right there. And we're back to a 12-12, which is just as important. Yeah, this match has been like pretty back and forth. I mean we're 37 minutes in, so the first sudden death tick has uh taken place, so the the victory counter will be much more aggressive, and that will be the same thing. When she reach 45 minutes, so this is where things start to get pretty tense. When it can really go either, 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 either side, really. And it's just looking nuts. Like, just look down south, Khan. Like, the front line is... I don't know what to make of it. It looks like a silly face. True. Like two eyes and, like, a long nose. Like oh, a... Have some, like, some, like, Antica. Escher painting. Yes. Yeah. Or Fraggle. Yeah. <laughs> I think a fraggle. <laughs> yeah. That's for my 90s folks out there. If you have any idea what I'm talking about, thank you. I appreciate you. Thanks for stopping on by for this history lesson. Um, Nebuffer and, and uh, Pennsylvania continues to kind of shell in the middle. I would like to see more of their fire directed down to the south, hitting these arterials, because at this point, it's like it's like the Ho Chi Minh Trail up in here. Yeah, I don't know. Where I'm, I'm just zoomed in down south, or zoomed out, I should really say, and... It's just a mess. I mean, we have, like, German infantry, even pockets behind enemy lines. We have a gearhead moving all his infantry through, and he has a lot of infantry. It's just a slow and steady advance to clear out his, uh, German enemy. So up north, El Her Robert has made pretty good progress in capturing that hill, at least. It's definitely relieving a little bit of pressure, but, um... Down south, it's just not pretty. I mean, Gear had even managed to get into the central southern hill position with just a superior squad. You might say he's feeling rather superior. <laughs> I think but so, especially being up on top of that hill. It must have been a bit of a uh, jog to get up it. Well, it looks like it's going to be who's going to be the better flame war trooper over here. Um, also, this is that super command tiger over here, isn't it? Uh... The Kompfira. No, I believe it's just a regular leader one. You have the the super commander one. The the com like support type commander one has the uh, orange icon. Oh yeah, right. 
Yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. But he's still leading, and from the front, with an 88mm gun. So he's providing a good example for his troops. And yet, at the same time, that's the wrong idea, dude. You have an 88mm gun, your place is two kilometers <laughs> behind the front line. Or in the meantime, kind of going to, and, and threatening to hold a position. You also have Maxims being rushed on in to maybe set up a secondary defensive line on the northern flank. Even as the southern continues to march forward, the northern looks more and more frail, all things considered. Yeah, I don't feel like Gearhead is gonna have any good chance in retaking this northern area. It's just a whole lot of scary German infantry, and yeah. And Gearhead just doesn't... I mean, once again, he's gonna be throwing... Uh, guard of troops, not after Machikis into the forest, and against Sturmschutzens and Pioneers, not gonna go great unless he has some sort of artillery, which he doesn't. Well, at least down to the south, we do see the machine gun has finally been taken on out, and that becomes an Axis, excuse me, an Soviet forest. The Axis forest exists up to the north, so... Yeah. And we're back to a trove trove, 40 minutes in. I have no idea who's gonna win this match, Khan. Well, and that's the thing. I just feel like it's gonna be we're gonna we're gonna go into one of those uh, matches where it's the punch drunk fighter is just so completely knocked to bejesus that there's they're both seeing God, but you know one's, <laughs> one for one of them it's gonna be the oncoming train. <laughs> Indeed, um, it will. But Russia's making their push over here to the northern flank. Germans trying to contain here down to the south, and yep, we're seeing other pens of her being brought on in, and I you know. As much as I deplore the loss of digital life, I applaud the use of artillery and the consistent use of rocket artillery because we just don't get to see it. The 70th Sturm is one of those few guys who get both of those little fun toys to work with. Yeah, they we've seen like a lot of rocket artillery strikes, which is not something we really see all that often. I mean, he's pretty much negated all use of mortars in favors of a bunch of naval rifles, and they've been they've been all right. I mean, I feel like he shouldn't be using them to knock out anti-aircraft pieces at long range, but in the more, like, as you've been saying, more direct approach and knocking out these infantry blobs of angry Russian paratroopers definitely is a much better uh, use of those panzers and naval ruffers. Well, it's just like these BF-109s really should be doing what they do right now. Hit the support teams. There's a maximum team that's you know, just got taken out, and the other one's got a little bit of pressure on them. This is what you need to do. Your infantry can handle his infantry one on one, generally. So let your guys do what they do best. Yeah. Yeah, down Sometimes south, it's just. That slow grind, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's just gonna be a grind. I mean, Her Robert's not in the best position to hold on that southern hill with his stern shootings and trying to get into. The other forest by the road is getting a bit deadly with Gearhead still holding the farm complex, but um... Oh, the Flam Pioneer behind enemy lines kills the lone guy, he kills the anti-aircraft beast! Oh, no. Beautiful. Beautiful. That, that was great. I, I was waiting for him to do something and he did it spectacularly. I confess to me, I've been watching this poor storm shooting down to the south, just kind of slowly watch the red tide, you know, come nearer and nearer, you know? Yeah. And be very happy as those assault rifles, but, you know, the T-34s and Sturmavikis. And Sturmavikis are pretty much uh, the rest and equivalent of those uh, flam pioneers or explosives. So, those Sturmshoots aren't going to have a good day. No. No, they're not. And it's not going to be much better as... You know... No, I'm sorry. I was thinking about the JU-188 that just came up to the north and got completely stressed out. Oh. And to me, I feel like you know that there's a bunch of palms basically all over the place. I get it. You get it. We know there's going to be a ton of them in the center part of the map. Why not work the flanks a little bit? You know, like down to the south, at this point, your storm shoots in, you know it's going to get flooded. Just by looking the way that the front line's moving, you know there's hunting infantry over here in the trees. Why not go after the trees? Even if it's a blind bombing run, why not go there? Yeah, he really needs to, especially now, just try to knock out Gearhead's infantry. Not so much because they're the deadliest threat, but more so they hold the territory which Her Robert needs to get his boots on. Well, and, quality, and quantity has a quality all of its own, right? Yeah. Yep, and yeah, I mean, we're gonna get to the 45 minute mark, so the bleed is gonna get even deadlier. But it's a 12 12. It's. 
I feel like Gearhead has a slight advantage in this match. Just he has pretty good territory, but I mean her robot can still flip this around. He can. It's possible. I'm not saying it's likely, but it is possible. Yeah. I feel like Gearhead is also out of like his T-34s like medium tanks, so really both sides are relegated to use uh, ISUs and Tiger tanks and a heavy tank brawl. I think I'm a little bit more concerned about the fact that if you're looking at the anti-tank infantry from both sides, the one I'm more nervous about, and we brought this up in the first, you know, 10 minutes, are the Soviets. I'm not, I'm not actually not that terrified of the Shrek squads, because the Shrek squads, you gotta get ridiculously close to kind of manage. Not to seem to be quite the same case over here with the PTRDs. The PTRDs just continue, continue to just get criticals and, and just annoying little hits and scrape off paint flakes one by one consistently. Yeah, that's so good. That's so bloody good. Especially when you can position them in a, on the enemy supply line road to snipe uh, units coming in. Like, we've seen that in casts multiple times in Red Storm, just how deadly that can be. Well, long last, we've seen the flag of your being brought on in. And yes, guys, remember, of course, like was said before, this may not be an actual flag of your Although, I think at this point in the match, this is going to be the anti-air version. Yeah, this is yeah. a problem. Another JU-188 goes down because he tried to fly it right back through where he knew all the anti-aircraft guns were. So, like... Yeah. He needs to do it in, uh, uh, Yeah. He really just needs to do it in, um... In big blobs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as much as I hate that that idea of sacrificing one to get three, you gotta do something drastic now. We see in the meantime, looking down to the south, T-34 on the bridge, they go down. One veteran pioneer, though, I don't think is going to be enough to turn back this tide. There's not, it's just, especially in that southern force, it doesn't matter if some things are pinned down or not. Yeah. Just checking up north and south, and there's this two over here. Well, he's, uh, he's doing little Stalin's work. He's pounding the snot out of those shugs, so... They're gonna be denying her, Robert, from making more offensive plays, but once again, Gearhead can't really effectively fight over that forest. This is too many scary German infantry. He's moving some descent redevkas into here, but they're not gonna be all that useful, really. Very, very true. And mortars are starting to drop back in again. Uh, geez, what's the, this is the 120. Yep, there's the 120 mil. So those guys right there, a little late to the party, but no less deadlier for being that that uh, tardy, let's say. Yeah, there we go. Gearhead's got the 1410 as a three-minute bleed. Uh, Robert, I mean, he doesn't have much time, and he needs to get something happening now, uh, making something happening in the center. I think so. I agree. Did the IL-2 down to the south? Yep, there's a flak for your just shelling that IL-2, and naturally the IL-2 is blithely not caring whatsoever. Yeah. I just love seeing all the uh, the ricochet shots off that tiger. Yes. <laughs> that was yes. really cool. It was like a Vegas fountain show or something like that. Yeah. But of deadly anti-tank round. Well, not that deadly in that case, really. Just gave the tiger crew a bit of a concussion. Which is probably yeah, a little bit deadly. That was a silent killer right there. It is. Piece by piece, though, we are seeing the Germans are getting dragged down bit by bit. It is. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm trying to think where Robert can get these flags. I mean, he's very close to getting that one in the farmstead. The Southern Hill one, it's a 1T34 holding back, holding back the Tiger and infantry. I... I don't know if Robert's gonna take us. I feel like it's a little bit too late at this point. I, I tend to think that as well. I think unfortunately, yep, as the Tiger Fuhrer goes down on the hill, I think at this point it's been one of those occasions where he took a couple of bad beats early on, and then his air power, as well as these BF-109s have been doing for him, the later we got, the less skillfully, in my mind, he ended up kind of deploying his air power outside of just these particular planes. Yeah. 
But I hey, think I mean, also does see income. Yeah, and and yeah, and that's the other thing too, and that's that's totally fair to make the comment about is that it's oh, always going to be up to battle. Well, it was a thirteen eleven still, so. It's, it's always going to be an uphill battle for the German divisions to go later and later, especially when you go and roll with a Red Storm Vanguard. But um, flag by flag is getting taken out. The, the unfortunate thing is that he can't get, you know, just that one flag, it feels like. There's a Resvetka and a Motorized Superior over here. There's a Nash one who's got, who's got his legs broken. And so much of this action took place down on the southern flank. Yeah. It's... So much of it. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of the action really, like, most of the match was. I think for Robot just manned into the secure at northern side. You know, that midpoint of the match really just secured, you know, anything happening up here. And once again, we're seeing a little bit of skirmishing, but no real major plays. It's really just a skirmish over the farm. B-A-G-G. And looking at the kills, death? Yeah, that's exactly what you expect. It's a 51 minute slugfest. These guys are going to go and have very, very little left. Yeah. And looking at the kills. Afanasiev over here. Five kills. Did pretty well for himself. Kolsky. Well. Oh, from that. Right, yeah. The Russians are very, um... No, everyone gets killed. Everyone gets kills. And killed. I was going to say everyone gets killed. Was that a Freudian slip there? <laughs> Or, or maybe a it's a Karamatsu even slip. I mean, we got to go with the Russian philosophers on this one. Yeah. Um, on the losses side, Konki, four kills. We have a couple of Grenadiers over here who did very well for themselves. We have Stransky who got four air kills as an 88, so well done to him. Pensive for I mean, this match could have ended a lot sooner, but for the valiant, valiant efforts of the artillery. And I would argue those Messerschmitts. Yeah, definitely some very important kills there of the Messerschmitt, but, um, yeah, I mean, Her Robert had some pretty good momentum early on, of course, with 78 Sturm, very good A phase, B phase division in this mod, but, I mean, it's just only, like, the lack of a lot of, like, good cheap, medium, and light tanks, especially in this division and also other divisions, can really screw you over and run V1s. They're so useful, especially in maps like this where you just need, you know, a cheap armored vehicle that can't get shot by small arms, which you can use to pin down enemy infantry and other nasty things. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. But that's kind of, that's going to be that kind of consistent thing, isn't it? Yep. And that's but just a right. problem <laughs> with uh, 78th. Exactly. Exactly. They and the storm happens. They bring the thunder, but every now and again, you know that storm's going to pass. Mm -hmm. But folks, I think it's going to about do it for us today. Of course, we have ourselves another wonderful replay coming to you a little bit later this week, actually on the most holy of days. Um, but we'll get to that, leaving in suspense about what is so special about Thursday. We'll get to let you guys get there first. Um, until said holy day, I'm Conalwork. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy. <laughs>